One, two, three. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the latest Shiny Podcast. This is Steve Inspector with Rob Hirschfeld. Hello. And uh, today we're going to talk about a conference Rob was just at in San Francisco with the fancy people there called the OpenStack Open Dev Edge Conference. That's a lot, That's a lot of opens and devs and, and, and everything else. But uh, before we go into the conference, just tell us what this conference was about. So the conference was organized by OpenStack as part of their open infrastructure initiative. So OpenStack has been, the foundation has been embracing their mission to promote open infrastructure. So Kubernetes, open storage, open operating systems, OpenStack itself, sort of the uh, constellation of, of infrastructure projects. And so this conference was um, a lot of people who were in the OpenStack community saying, we really need to figure out how to manage edge infrastructure, telcos, retail, um, IoT. It was, a, it was a lot of different people, a lot of different interests trying to, trying to think about edge computing. So let's talk about what edge computing is. I don't know. Why are you asking well, me? I asked you, well, you know, I said, <laughs> I said the word fog computing the other day and you almost killed me. So I'm not going to say fog computing. No one heard it. But what, what is edge computing? It's kind of a new term popping up everywhere. So I think it's good to have kind of a, you said a definition, at least for this podcast, people will go, that's what they're talking about. So they should about. definitely read the blog post. Yes. I have I have four points that make it make what I think edge is edge. And, and one of the, the funny themes about that conference is that everybody, we spent half the time in every session arguing about what it, what it was. Was it small machines? Was it robot machines? Was it uh, clouds close to the ground, with the, which is fog? And mm -hmm. I, I'm a very firm believer, edge is not mini clouds. Uh, there was a professor from um, uh, Northeast, Carnegie Mellon, mm -hmm. uh, who's like, oh, it's mini cloud. And I'm not a fan of that um, because Cloud infrastructure is usually scale, completely location agnostic, very network focused. Edge computing is, is really something that's very close to where the data is being generated. It's geographically dispersed. You do edge computing because you're trying to get close to the data source or close to the consumer of that data and not have to run it back into a data center. And so the management paradigms are really, really different between an edge infrastructure and a hyperscale cloud infrastructure. So an edge is kind of, um, I'm thinking about the, the, the technology <laughs> from Academy. You actually want me to tell videos. you what it is. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> so they have the videos, you know, when you're going to play a video and they've kind of preset it in it's essentially data, data centers closer to where you are. That's the it, edge. That's the first that's, edge that people should be aware of. Right. So, so proximity, you know, networks are constrained by speed of light and cost. Mm -hmm. And so there is a very big need to take places where people consume data, like video is an example that comes yeah. up over and over again, and move that close to the consumers of the data. So um, Netflix has an amazing uh, distributed cache environment that's very edge focused mm -hmm. so that the, you know, the popular movies are close to the consumers. Um, so that, you know, Akamai is the, the sort of yeah. the poster child for that. Uh, Fastly is another one. Uh, Amazon and Google both have very good networks. And, th and those are relatively well solved problems. What we're seeing is actually an inversion of control for this, where you have people who want to collect a lot of sensor data, like from an autonomous vehicle or from a field or you know, home networks. Um, we're, we're growing a lot of data. That needs to be processed. Um, a really good example is imagine a store that has cameras and you want to do facial recognition or you want to do product analytics. You're not going to send that back to the, the global data center to do that analysis and then send it back. If you want it, you want to be able to have a data center um, in the store, an edge data center that actually can handle all that processing and analytics and do that work right there and then make the, make the decision or the recommendation without it back being backhauled. That is what we're talking about for edge, right? In a car data center, you know, in, a, in, a, in a car is collecting data, it throws off some of it to, right. you know, to coordinate with other cars. That analysis has to be very fast. It has to have short ping times. It's very chatty and none of that data is relevant outside of the small geographic area that those cars are operating in. So they're all good examples of this explosive need for more and more compute, um, you know, a lot of machine learning type compute that needs to happen geographically distributed in places where they have to be autonomous operation. They can't, they're not going to have people. You're not going to have a lot of power. You're not, you know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting problem. It's very different. 
So can I look at it this way, which I think you might yell at me. So if you think of client server computing, mm -hmm. where we had our clients, our laptops, and we had servers. So we moved everything to clients, then we moved everything to cloud. So now we're coming back, but instead of moving to your client, your laptop, we're moving to a server that's near it. It's, it's still very cloud-like in so that we're cloud. using you know, containerized, distributed applications, we're using DevOps. Mm -hmm. So all of the things that we do in cloud, we want to keep doing in, in, in Edge. Uh, and I'm not saying that we're not going to do that. We have to. As a matter of fact, I spent some, I, I'm writing up some posts yeah. uh, that describe how we're going to use CI, CD, and immutable infrastructure techniques on the edge. So all of the cloud techniques come down, but the management of that infrastructure is just fundamentally different because we're talking about tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of distinct little data infrastructures. We're talking about network uh, bandwidth being limited. We're talking about um, you know, just this massive scale of how things work, and, and then they are resource constraints. So you don't have, you know, a three server redundant control plane. Um, right? It's, 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 it's a, we have to think about it differently. So to me, this is where digital rebar provision and rack end really has something that no one else has. Is how are you going to manage these servers? How do you do an upgrade? Because if, as an example, the store, you got a server in the back. You right. don't want anyone touching that server in the back, which is why we put everything in the cloud. And, and now we realize, well, we still need to put stuff forward, especially with IoT and things. So how does RackN solve that problem that people, I'm not sure they even thought about this problem, to be honest, but I think you've hit on a problem that's coming. Yeah. But you have the answer today. We do. And, and this answer is, is hard one because it comes from our OpenStack battle scars where we were trying to create repeatable processes for installing OpenStack on-premises infrastructure where there wasn't a lot of repeatable anything. Yeah. Um, and so we really spent time trying to figure out how do we take um, useful operational logic for running physical infrastructure and make that something people can use site to site to site. It's the composability story that I've been mm -hmm. telling a lot. Um, and what Racken has done with DR, DR provision or digital rebar provision mm -hmm. is we actually have made our configuration, automation, the workflows decomposed and then read only for the reusable components. So when you build your data center on top of these components, you can keep subscribing to the, the, the community content, the shared rack and the, the, the supported content and change less and less and less of your, you know, of your automation to match your needs and use more and more of the, the shared best practices proven infrastructure. And then even if you do have custom stuff, the way we're distributing it, you can then make that read only for your own site and then you could massively distribute that. So imagine a 10,000 node store infrastructure like one of the massive retail chains mm -hmm. and they can use our content, right, to do the baseline that they don't want to have to own. And then whatever they install in the store, they can distribute a, a proven, tested, uh, continuously integrated profile to 10,000 stores in a very reliable way. Um, yeah, that, that type of thinking hasn't, isn't being done. It's not mm -hmm. chef or puppet recipes that you're distributing. This is a layer below. Mm -hmm. And that is what guarantees very repeatable best practices um, infrastructure management. And from that starting point, we can then accelerate Kubernetes or OpenStack or custom dev or whatever work that people And do. deliver the edge. So if, if you're listening to this podcast and um, it's September in 2017, and it could be a year or two someone listens to this, it always seems to be over time podcasts get listened to, go out to the uh, rackend.com blog, and uh, Rob put out a post on September 13th, a post on the 14th, and he's putting out a third post talking about uh, this edge, edge uh, computing, com the conference and edge computing in general um, on the 15th. So take a look at those three blogs um, we encourage you, if you have questions or want to know more, certainly talk to Rob. I mean, it, it, based on seeing everything that came out of the conference you were at, I think people are really confused about this. And people so think that, and I think people think that edge computing is a data center. Like if I have a data center sitting in uh, Chicago, edge computing means, oh, I have stuff sitting in California, so I'll put it in a data center in California, and now it's closer. And they don't think that's what it means. No, that's, it, it, we're really talking about the multiple scale repeatable process. But these, these are things that we need to do as an industry, and even if they're running in a data center, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at doing top of rack uh, digital rebar provision endpoints. So if you have 100 racks, it's 100 endpoints. You still have a distribution scale problem. 
Um, and that is actually that's a whole different topic. Yeah, maybe for another day. Oh, an exciting well, topic. I think every podcast we have, we come out with three new topics. <laughs> but everyone, uh, you know, Rob, thanks for joining us, and everyone, thanks for you. listening. And uh, certainly, go out and take a look at those three blogs. It's really. Um, it's quite remarkable how people are missing what's happening and, and how Rock In really solves this challenge. Thanks again, Rob. Thank you, Steve.